when faith comes alive, victory is guaranteed. When faith comes alive, victory is guaranteed. When faith comes alive, victory is guaranteed. Oh Lord, I thank you. Let me spend five minutes and try and close. Your destiny is enviable. Oh Lord. Your potential in redemption is enviable. You are a great nation. Oh, Jesus. Somebody shout, great nation. Great nation. It's not with conviction. I'm going to talk over here because the people here seem convinced. Say, great nation. Great nation. Great name. Great, name. great blessings. Great, great blesser. Great blesser. And global player. Global player. That's the memo. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. You are a great nation. You. Okay, thank you. I can see who I'm talking to over there. You are a great name. You are greatly blessed of God. In fact, you are so blessed, you have to be a blessing to others. And you are a global player, not a local champion. Your destiny is enviable. Good God. Can you clap for two seconds, despite the time shortage? <laughs> Why are you clapping? Shout, great name! Great name! Great nation, great blessing, great blesser, global player. That's who I am. You are a pace setter. That's who you are in redemption. You are an asset. That's who you are to God. You are the light of the world, Matthew says in chapter 5, verse 14. A city set on a hill. A showcase and showpiece for everybody. Thank you, Jesus. I'm conscious of time. Oh, good God. A showcase. That's what it means, a city set on a hill. And in the first service, I talked about showroom business. I've ever, some of you have wanted to buy a car and gone to a showroom. You know, cars are supposed to be for all weather. Snow, rain. Uh, whatever. But in showrooms, cars are put under a, a house with air condition. The car that's supposed to be conditioning you is conditioned. They polish it night and day. A car is supposed to serve people, people serve it. Anybody that walks into the showroom, the show person takes them to the car and says, look at the car. This is what the car can do. This is why you should buy this car. It's just the best thing you can do with your money right now. It's all polished. It's looking its best. God said, when faith comes alive, he makes you a showcase. That means he brings people to see you and shows them what he can do. And what you are able to do. Are, are you with me so far? That's who you are. Like I said in the first service, I think I should add that as free of charge. That when you have cars in the showroom, when people have seen the car, you know the way they lean on the car and everything. So they leave their fingerprints on the car. And then somebody comes along as soon as they've left. And guess what they do? They polish the fingerprints, so that the next person that comes along sees it at its best. Anybody that has laid their fingers on you and left a print, any demon or devil that left their imprint on your life, I see God coming along and polishing it off so that you will not smell of the fire you have been through. You can say amen louder than that. Shout Glory! That's the kind of person you are. Not what people call you. Thank you, Jesus. I will stop in a moment. You are a preserver of generations. Joseph said in Genesis 45, verse 5, he said, no, 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 don't, don't, don't fret. Don't worry. Don't be angry. God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. All I went through was for the preservation of life. You are amazing. You are, you are extraordinary. 
In redemption, no trace of failure can be found in you. You need to believe what I'm telling you right now. You are a sign to your generation. You are raised for a time like this. You defy statistics. You surpass the odds. Those that look down at you will look at you and say, wow, look at what God has done. It, am I talking to anybody here? If I am, you can say amen louder. Amen. Please hear me. Give me three, four minutes. Now listen to me. I speak by the Spirit of God. I speak by the Spirit of God. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time to throw in the towel. This is not the time to abandon ship. God is about to do something amazing. Jesus, I speak to the inner recesses of your mind and the imaginations of your heart. The unspoken words that are realities to every night you lie down to sleep. Every lying demon that told you is too late. I, that it is irreversible. That what you have come into, you will live with it for the rest of your days. I come as a servant of the Most High God to tell you that faith can reverse anything. There is nothing irreversible to faith. And your faith comes alive for a reversal of your circumstances. Please wave your hands and say amen one more time. Wave your hands and say amen one more time. Wave your hands and shout amen even louder. And I give you three prophetic symbols and three prophetic anchors for this thought. David returned to Ziklag and the people around him were going to stone him. Because all of their families had been taken and their houses had been burned. And they wept until there were no more tears in their eyes. These are grown-up warriors. And then David abandoned the adversity of his environment and saw the face of God. And God said to him, David, you can't remain where you are right now. He said, if you will pursue them, you will overtake them and you will take back everything that the devil stole. I point at somebody here, it may not be everybody, to tell you your days of crying are over. Your days of mourning have come to an end. Your terminators have been terminated. And you will pursue, you will overtake, and you will recover everything that the devil stole from you. In every area, in every area, in every area, I speak to every Lazarus. Please hear me. I'm not speaking to entertain anybody here. When Jesus said, take me to the grave of Lazarus, her own brother, she consulted with God and proceeded to advise him that this case of my brother, even though I love him, is too late. If you roll away the stone, a stench will come out of the grave. For he has already been buried three, four days. I came to tell you, whoever loves you but told you your case is closed. There is a God that can reverse anything when your faith comes alive. Your case is being reversed in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Everybody that surrounded you making fun of you. Everybody that turned their back on you, the people that pointed at you and said nothing good can come out of you, the people that are pointing at your past as a dictate for your future, everybody that has closed your book and written off your chapter, you shall be lifted by your faith in God in the name of Jesus. Can you shout amen violently? I see your health being restored. I see your marriage being restored. I see your joy being restored. I see your finances being restored. Shout yes if you believe it. Ah, I speak to every demonic force and all the forces of nature. Now when you bury a person for four days, the forces of nature take control. Decay begins. It is a natural force. It's a natural force, but faith is a stronger force than every natural force. Every natural force that has taken hold of your life and your destiny, I revert it by the force of faith today. 
in the name of my God. Can I say even louder? Your organs are being restored. Your family is being restored. Your relationships are being restored. Somebody shout restoration. Redemption is coming to your household. Good God. Can you celebrate a mighty... T Some of you by next week, Sunday, you're coming here with your testimony. Shout hallelujah. I have to stop. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They abandoned you. They mocked you. They even discussed you. And said there is no hope for her or him in God. But this year, this quarter, there shall be a reversal. Aye. Hey, oh God, can you pray in the spirit for five seconds? I feel something in this place. There shall be a reversal. I thought I was in glory house. I reverse every work of darkness. Every statement that has been made over your life and your destiny. The devil is a liar. Joy is coming to your household. Peace is coming to your household. Healing is coming to your body. What the enemy meant for evil, God is turning it around for your good. Now give him a victory. Shout like you're the only one here. This is your year. This is your year. This is your year. Now, some of you got letters in the last two to three weeks that shattered your hope and impacted your expectation. And God sent me to tell you, the woman with the issue of blood had it for 12 years. She lost everything she had. You may seem like you've lost everything she had, but when she heard, about Jesus. Faith came alive in her heart. Bleeding, weak, battered, bruised. She said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. In the beginning, has already been read, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. There is nothing that was made that was not made by him. Jesus is the living word, the manifested word. And when that woman touched Jesus, she touched his word. When faith came alive, then virtue flowed. Somebody is touching the word of faith this afternoon, and the power of God is flowing into your circumstances. If it's you, can you wave your hands and shout, I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, take delivery of your miracle, take delivery of your breakthrough. How many believers do you have in the house? Can you give him a three second shout like you have already gotten the letter, the email, the job, the breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. Your faith will make you retrace your steps. It will redeem what was lost. You will recover what the devil took. You will find the right track. Your faith will hand you your breakthrough. Your faith. Your faith. How then do you get faith? I'm going to make, read two or three sentences. I have to tell you, you can't fake it to make it. Now watch me, faith is only accessible by the word. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. The only source of faith is the word. Thank you, Jesus. The word of God. The word is what pumps faith into your heart. The word is what pump, pumps. The word pumps faith into the heart. You can't get it from anywhere else. So take the word of God seriously. Thank you, Jesus. The word pumps faith into your heart. The word pumps faith into your heart. Jesus. The word pumps faith into your heart. I'm, I'm almost done. Take it seriously. You can 
can't have the same measure of faith as somebody else if you don't put the same input. It can never happen. I was praying one day and fasting, and the Lord showed me. I was just studying the word, and the Lord showed me that the centurion said, you don't need to come to the house, send the word. And God referred me to the book of Psalms. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. That Jesus doesn't need to come into my house physically so long as his word is there. This was a while back. And then one day somebody came to meet me that her, sister, her brother had collapsed and was in a coma for 30 days. And they wanted to switch off the life support machine. Most of you have heard this story. I think this was two years ago. They were going to switch off the life support machine. Brain dead, kidney failure, heart failure, all kinds of things. The sister in another country said, in America, said, until you switch it off, I must speak to my sister. The sister said, you must not switch it off until I speak to my pastor. The pastor was told in the back room. The pastor was told, but the help of man is useless. So I referred the matter. She was standing right in front of me. I said, stop crying. Let me just consult. And while I was praying, the word of revelation that God had given me before, that distance is no occlusion to the hand of God. That Jesus transcends all distance. He is the Lord of the universe. And they gave me a prophetic word from the scriptures. So faith came alive in my heart. That you do not need to come to my house. Only speak the word. So I asked her, what's the name of your brother? She told me. I said, I'm going to do something strange now. Can you handle it? She said, yes. I said, tell me the name. I'm going to scream his name three times. Madness to a medical doctor. So I screamed his name three times and said, it is not yet your time. Come back. I get poster. He cleared the host. That is not academic fake. You can't fake that. You can't fake that. I said, you come back. It's not yet your time. Seven days later, the boy opened his eyes. After 30 days in coma, they said he will never have a normal life. He will be a vegetable. The next thing, in a few days later, he sat up in his bed. He said, I'm hungry. About a week to 10 days, 7, 14 days later, he walked out of the hospital with a medical parade. Everybody was clapping. That's the man that everybody had given up on. But Jesus' word of faith released power. I know I am talking to somebody here. Those that gathered for your funeral are actually gathering for your celebration. You shall be lifted in the name of Jesus. Jesus respected the word of faith and went to America and touched him. The mother flew into England a few weeks later and knelt down. She said, see me, knelt down. I said, mommy, please stand up. It would be madness for me to take the glory. This is not the act of a man. This is Jesus at work. Once you touch the hem of his garment by faith, the power flows. Don't wait for tomorrow for your miracle because he's already here now. Have you ever said, Jesus saved me? And he said, come back next week, I'm busy. Has anybody ever walked down the aisle and Jesus said, I saved 50 people in China this afternoon, so you need to wait till Wednesday next week. Has anybody ever walked up to Jesus and said, heal me? And Jesus said, I'm too busy right now. Write me a letter. So faith is now. Faith is now. Faith determines your destiny, not time. It's your faith. So pay attention to the word. Now I say this with transparency before God, even though I've gone over time. And I tell you now, the Lord told me, my son, in this year 2013, your greatest priority is to pump faith. Never miss an opportunity for faith pumping opportunities. Never. Never. You pump yourself with the word. You connect to your hearing. And when you have heard, you write it down and meditate upon it. You can't just sit down and say, I heard it, Pastor. It was hot today. Ooh, 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 ooh. It was hot. No. You make it hot in your heart. Until you can preach it the way pastor is preaching it, you have not got there yet. You must be able to out-preach him. You have no idea how many pastors meet me in the back room and say, Pastor, I was meditating upon what you said. And they'll be telling me things that never occurred to me. By the speech of revelation, young man said, I said, Pastor, don't you understand? 
I was sharing revelation that 17 years is when David was anointed. He was then made king at 30. He said 17 from 30 is 13. This is the year of the manifestation of the anointing. I mean, this is a young person in, in out of Zion who was sending me these revelations and I was dancing in my feet and my mind, I thought, I can't wait to get to church next. So deep calls to the deep. Iron sharpens iron. Revelation provokes revelation. In your life, we see light. Some of you need to change the company you are keeping and keep company with people that will be provoking faith. <laughs> Not people that will be telling you, oh, it will never happen. Remind them, they are deceiving you. So you meditate upon the word that you hear. You make yourself available. In fact, let me read what I wrote in my diary. God said to me, he said, this is a rescue mission of destiny. A rescue mission of destiny. And when you are rescuing, if you look at the emergency services, you put on the flashing lights. And you go against all laws of traffic. And you move everybody aside. This faith you require is a, in an emergency service of heaven that requires you to move everything aside. Nothing is unchangeable. Nothing is irreversible. No demonic attack does, that cannot be stopped. There is no curse. You are too blessed to be cursed. Don't give up. Give in to faith. Your future is bright. Uh, can you give God a praise if you know I'm talking to you? You find the promises, you embrace them. Are you with me? You believe it, you behave it, and then you become it. You believe it, that's faith. Then you behave it. You can't say, God is my provider. I believe it, and then you go around begging. How can you be begging when you say God is your provider? So you act it. Even if you come up against somebody who has a lot of money, don't beg them. That I perceive that God wants to use you. That's begging. Don't you have any discernment? Can't you see? Since I've been sitting next to you, isn't the Lord speaking to you? No. You have holes in your shoes. Doesn't mean that you should keep doing this. That's begging. Direct or indirect. God is my provider. Nobody will be responsible for my blessing. Nobody will open up their mouth and say, it's because of me you made it. That's what Abraham said, and you are the seed of Abraham. Can I get an amen from somebody? If God says you are healed, then behave like you are healed. Don't go around looking for pity parties. Please feel sorry for me. What's the matter with you? You know some people are like that. Are you okay? Are you okay? No. You powder your face. You put on a smile. And your dance is the most rigorous dance in the service. So people think, why won't she be dancing? She has no cares. No, you are dancing before the Lord that made the heavens and the earth that he would change your circumstances. So your dancing is an act of faith. I was saying to lawyers in the back room after the first service, and this is just a secret. You should know your pastor's secrets. The Lord said to me, you honored me. You honored me. Psalm 65. Praise waits for you, O God, in Zion. You honored me, my son. You honored me by making a covenant vow for me, with me, that any service that you are in attendance, that I will be there when worship starts. God said to me, you have honored me. Pastors don't honor me like that. I'm, telling you, I'm reading from my diary. He said, pastors will stroll in halfway through the service and sit down like, in, yes, yes. I approve. He said, but you honored me like that, and since you made that vow, you have kept it. You went to wait for me. He said, therefore, as long as you keep true to this vow, I will make sure I go to wait for you. Wherever you need me, I will be waiting for you there. I mean, this is revelations of faith. So if you like, don't come for praise and worship. Strolling at the end of it, I don't care. I will be there with God. <laughs> it's a vow between God. I don't be annoyed. You can do the same. Don't be upset. 
<laughs> no, people have said that. How can you be saying that to me? No, that's between you and God. <laughs> but Uncle said, we'll not fake it. So I will come if I'm the only one. I'll be dancing and rejoicing before God. Then the rest of the people can join me. <laughs> and I get an amen. Lift up your hands. Those hands lifted are a congratulations. Heaven visits you. You will receive outstanding blessings over the next few days. Somebody say, I believe. Destiny is recovered. Every derailed destiny is put back on track. Everything the devil has stolen is being recovered. Oh, please say amen to that. Your health is restored. Your joy is restored. Your testimony is restored. All your dreams become realities. There are manifestations of heaven all over your life. Can you say amen even louder than that? What you did not ask for, receive it. What you did not think you need, take delivery of it. Breakthroughs, miracles, outstanding divine interventions. In the name of Jesus, you are marked for success. Your glorious destiny will be realized. A chosen generation, royal priesthood, a holy nation. That's what you'll be. You shall show forth the praise of him that called you out of darkness into his mouth. Now, can I give you five seconds to give him praise for this glorious day? Five, four, three, two, one.